likely to have minor accidents since things like knives, tools, and machines are typically designed for righties. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Stay informed on everything going on in the villages with the Village Spectator newspaper. The Village Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of the Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. Just about, just about. It is already New Year's in some parts of the world, so. Yeah, New Happy, Zealand was first. Happy New Year's. No, Russia was first. Oh, Russia. Yeah. I should have paid attention to your Santa tracker. <laughs> and that, that makes sense now. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, we don't have the psychic on today. No. The psychic wasn't able to do it today. Last year we had the psychic on on, on the last day of the year. Mm-hmm. The psychic who was uh, not only telling us what the future would hold for us collectively, but us individually as well. I don't remember what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember if she was telling us the truth or not. I don't either. I'll have to find that tape and, and see if... It, anyway, we tried our best, too, to make predictions, although we're horrible at it. And we, My predictions are always so optimistic. I am a very much an optimist, you know? Yes, you are. When, when, I, when, I, when I try to predict the future at the end of the year, I don't say it in, in the sense that I have any psychic abilities. Mm-hmm. Although, I think, I think we all have psychic abilities, like when it comes to something really pers- personal and close to us. I think we all have kind of an intuitive sense about the people we love and the things yeah. that are happening in our lives. But to sit down and tell you who's going to be the president, who's going to run for the presidency, yeah, 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 or, or, or you know, with nobody, nobody, nobody on January 1st, 2001, nobody said, oh, this is the year we're going to have some attacks on the World Trade Center in New York and on the yeah. Pentagon. Nobody. None of those psychics said that at all. No, I None will tell you that I was not doing a radio show January 1st, 2001. That was a three-year gap in my radio days. Mm-hmm. I took three years off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I paid attention. And, and no, nobody said that. So no. I mean, what, what good is it to be a psychic if you can't tell us stuff like that? Of course, if you could tell us stuff like that, then I suppose we would stop it from happening, and then you would be wrong, right? Or, or, or maybe there was evidence that would have happened, and then you could just say, I told you. Yeah. But, but thank goodness I told you, because now it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Now, that would be an awesome power to have. To be able, Wasn't that a movie where they could predict a crime before it actually happened? Yeah, wasn't there a movie yeah, there like was. That? I can't remember the name, but there was a movie like that. All right, let's, uh, yeah, I'm... You know, not the best when it comes to talking about mm-hmm. uh, potential candidates for the presidency, but that's what I want to do right now. Okay. I'm using other people's thoughts on this, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'll tell you okay. what they are. <laughs> so I, I tried my best to find um, some pros and cons of the Republicans and the Democrats. I don't have anybody uh, telling me w- which candidates are possibly presidential candidates in any third parties. They're all other, all the others are third parties. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's start with, uh, let's, I think I have the Republican one first, um, which of course would be Jeb Bush, right? Yes. Oh, hold on, where is it? Where is I believe it's Jeb Bush. No, 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 I'm, I'm just telling you on, on my list. Oh, okay. Jeb Bush, yeah, one of the, one of the candidates, uh-huh. one of the, well, he's, I think the only one who's actually named himself, right? I think so, yeah. Ben Carson is still out there. The pros and the cons. Uh, jo- Jeb Bush is 61 years old. Mm-hmm. He was the governor of Florida for two terms. Um, he's the son of George H.W. Bush, who, by the way, is still in the hospital. He's the brother of President George W. Bush, the president who was the president when mm-hmm. September 11th attacks happened. He's married, has three children, and we met him. Yes, we did. One of those weird things. We met him on September 12th, 2001. Yeah. We met him the day after the attacks. Yeah, we had that appointment since June. Not that that has anything to do with voting for him or not, but... Yeah, but we had that appointment since June, and they did not call to cancel it. What was your impression of him? Can I ask you this? What was your impression of, of Jeb Bush? I thought he was very warm and uh, very caring and very interested in why we I were I thought there. he was... 
<laughs> I like the guy. Yeah. But I thought he was rude. Oh. I thought what, he was what, rude. At what point did... Well, because I was telling him something about the painting that we were delivering to him. Yes. And he cut me off and and didn't let me finish. Do you remember that? Oh, now I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's so right. So I, I just thought, but now. maybe he had something okay. else on his mind. Because if you remember, <laughs> not only was it a day after the attacks, but it was also there was also a hurricane coming toward Ocala, uh, toward Florida. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. And they, and so, they had the But military. I liked him. I'm not telling yes. you I didn't like him. I just thought he was a little bit rude to me because I, was, I had this little thing prepared. I mean, it, would have, it was like a two-paragraph thing that I had... I didn't read it. I just kind of thought it, okay? And yeah. he stopped me from saying it, whatever. That's right. I forgot about that. He he did sit with your mom. But what was cool, yeah, he put his own... He, he, my mom was sitting on the couch. My mom had uh, a hip replacement, as you, many of you know. And so she couldn't really stand waiting for him. So she sat on this striped couch. Remember that? Yes, we have like a, like a love seat, one of those things. Mm -hmm. And he sat next to her, and he and he said, "Hey, mom, how are you?" Put his arm around her. So yeah. he was really nice in that. So in other words, he was nice to you and my mom. Kind of rude to me. I wonder well, how Alex and taller than him now. You think he felt threatened? I think he did because no. you were taller than him. And <laughs> he's richer than me. He's ta yeah, but that doesn't, that doesn't matter. matter, huh? No, no, that doesn't matter. You, you had, you had more of a commanding well. He didn't. He didn't understand he did. why we were called Robin and the Giant. I don't understand. You're not that big. Remember he right. said that? Yeah, I do. You I do remember that? I do remember that. Yeah. I don't know why you call Robin and the Giant. Like he's that. not so big. What do you yeah. mean I'm not so big? <laughs> I know. He was threatened by it. That's right. I did. That was I coming think you're back right. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. He wanted to be the most commanding presence in the room, and you were it. <laughs> you're the most. I don't statue. think so. Well, your statue and your demeanor and uh, everything. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, now it's all coming back to me. <laughs> Maybe I should run. <laughs> I think so. Nobody would vote for me. Well, you did. You made the front page of the Star Banner. Stop. Don't go there. All right. Uh, so anyway, anyway uh, Jeb Bush is 61 years old, and here are the pros and the cons, okay? According to, uh, where am I getting this from? Oh, from, News, <laughs> from Newsmax. <laughs> okay. Uh, the pro, he regarded as a successful and popular governor in a key battleground state, meaning Florida. He's a member of the Bush dynasty. That's a positive. Some people don't look at, some don't like that. He has yeah. a high support among uh, Latinos. He does speak Spanish, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah, it's very fluent. The cons against him, he has an electorate, uh, as an electorate, wait, he ha has the electorate had enough of the Bush family. So, so it's a pro and a con to be a Bush. If he runs against Hillary Clinton, one could ask the same question about her. Yes. Have we had enough with the Clintons? Right. Uh, <laughs> Another he, Democrat. One of the, the biggest cons against, against Jeb Bush is that he supports the Common Core education mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, he's got to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> fix that. Yeah, he has to What's work on that. What's the matter with you? Exactly. Haven't you seen those math equations? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway. Um, He's also, uh, he also backs immigration reform, uh, which are both unpopular issues with many Republicans. Although, I, I mean, the reform that I heard kind of d described by um, Marco Rubio, mm -hmm. who also was rude to me. Oh, he was. We had him on the phone, and he was, oh. Also was rude to he me. He was very, sometimes, these guys have an ego problem. Sometimes they are. Yeah. They have nice to you. <laughs> Not so nice to me. I know, I know. It's and why? <laughs> what have I ever done? <laughs> well, it's 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 the opposite too. We found if if there's a woman on the phone, sometimes they're really nice to you, and it's like you know. To oh, me. I never noticed yeah, that. Yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it's the gender thing. Too. We are not doing this topic very well. We've got one person named so far, okay. Jeb Bush. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Dr. Ben Carson, I don't think he has said he will run, but a lot of people want him to run. Dr. Ben Carson happens to be a black man. I did not know this when I first started reading about him. So to tell me I like him or don't like him because of his color wouldn't be accurate at all. I do like him. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think it was a listener who pointed out that he was African-American. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It was. Anyway, Mr. Carson, Dr. Carson is 63 years old. He's the retired director of pediatric neurosurgery. I don't think he's ever held an office, has he? I don't think so, from what I understand. He's because that was one of the, you know, points, the cons against him from some people. But hey, I'd rather have somebody in there that's like a doctor that saves human lives and somebody that's a politician the he, whole time. He made a biting speech against Obamacare at the 2013 National Prayer Breakfast. Yes, he did. Um, 
and the what they say is a con against him. He has never held political office. That that is a kind of a con because you don't know what you're stepping into with that presidency. You kind of have to. I think my opinion is you kind of have to do it gradually. Mm-hmm. Have to have some political experience. If if nothing else, uh, I don't know, S- S- congressman. I mean, I, I you don't have to go as low as. You know, like dog city. catcher, but yeah. sorry, dog catchers. But I mean, you don't have to go that low, but you just have to start somewhere. All right, let's take a little break and we'll be right back. We'll continue and we'll try to straighten up our act. <laughs> it is New Year's Eve after all. <laughs> the weather is brought to you by myfwc.com. Safe voting is no accident. So it'll be mostly cloudy today with a passing shower. Highs anywhere from the mid 60s to the mid 70s. It'll be mostly cloudy tonight with a passing shower. But overnight, though, anywhere from the low 50s inland to the mid 60s to the beaches. New Year's Day will be pleasant with clouds and sun and highs in the 70s. For Friday, warm with clouds and sun highs in the upper 70s to lower 80s. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Think unique gifts are hard to find? If so, you haven't been to Downtown Jewelry and Pawn in Bellevue. Frank has something for everyone. Antiques, costume jewelry, diamonds, gold, watches, fine china, art deco pieces, and so much more. Located at 5445 Southeast 111th Street in Bellevue, behind Checkers, a trip to Frank's Downtown Jewelry and Pawn is a must. A little elf told me that the big guy shops there. You should too. And Frank does great repairs. The College Football Playoff Committee has met, and they've decided that Florida State is your third seed. They're playing in the Rose Bowl against number two Oregon, and we'll have it right here on WOCA January 1st, 5 o'clock kickoff. So join us for Florida State football as they take part in the first ever college football playoffs right here on WOCA, the source. Seminole football is proudly brought to you by Culligan of North Florida. The Ocala Civic Theater presents Sleuth. The mystery is in the wit of the two young rivals that battle each other to commit the perfect crime. Predator becomes prey, and this diabolical thriller blends danger and dark humor. The tension builds with every riveting plot twist and illusion. Sleuth at the Ocala Civic Theater on stage January 8th to January 18th. Call the box office at 352-236-2274. Hey Ocala, this is Kelly Hart, executive editor of Ocala Magazine. Did you know last year Ocala Magazine won more awards and excellence than any other publication in Florida? And this year, Ocala Magazine was named best consumer magazine in the state. Now you can join me every Friday at 10 a.m. on Ocala Magazine Radio, where we bring the pages of Ocala Magazine to life, right here on The Source. Ocala Magazine thanks you for making us number one. And remember, there is only one Ocala Magazine. The most trusted name in news, Fox News, every half hour, only on 96.3 FM, 1370 AM, The Source. W-O-C-A. All right, 18 minutes after 9 o'clock, so let's try to do this right, Robin. So okay. we, we've been talking about the potential candidates in, in 2016 for the presidency. I realize tomorrow is 2015, but you know as well as I do that the whole thing starts cranking up around summertime this year. Yes. Although it's tr- truly cranking up already with a couple of announcements and exploratory committees, et cetera, et cetera. So mm-hmm. Jeb Bush, Dr. Ben Carson, and the third one I have on my list is uh, Chris Christie, the governor of the state of New Jersey, who is 52 years old um he is most likely to appeal to democrat of the republicans he's the one most likely to appeal to democrats that's what it says here oh okay uh so if he is uh, nominated and the democrats don't like their own choice he might get some of their votes Mm -hmm. wow uh he has had some failing approval ratings since the Washington Bridge problems. Remember that? Where oh, yes. he and his office were being blamed for the intentional traffic jam and closing of some of those lanes. I believe it was one of the levels, actually, on the Washington Bridge. Uh, he had negative scores on handling the economy in the state of New Jersey. Um, 
He's been accused of having some misspoken words about Israel, Cuba, and other foreign affairs. Um, anyway, he comes off as a, uh, a bully to some, uh, considered to be too liberal by many Republicans, but nevertheless, a lot of people do like him. I've had my ups and downs with him. It depends on what time, what he said, most mm-hmm. recent thing he said. But All right, Ted Cruz is another prominent Republican. He's only 44 years old. Uh, my, my favorite quote from Ted Cruz, by the way, was when he said that the that Congress was waiting in their own duty. Oh, yeah, that was fun. I, <laughs> <laughs> you brought that up, and that was funny. I had not heard it before I just thought that was up. a funny quote. And anyway, <laughs> uh, he was first his first term as U.S. Senator from Texas. He's married. He's got two children. Uh, he's beloved in the Bible Belt. He's considered a Tea Party darling. Mm-hmm. He uh, is a staunch uh, opposer, I guess to say, uh, to Obamacare. If uh, if he is elected president, you probably will see that thing undone. Um, he has some Cuban heritage, so the Hispanics like him. Uh, he has, in, in the con section, uh, the con column, he's been attacked for amnesty opposition during the recent $1.1 trillion budget debate that helped outgoing Democrat Majority Leader Harry Reid get 23 long-stalled committee uh, nominees, rather, of Barack, President Obama confirmed. Mm-hmm. Um, some people consider him to be arrogant, intelligent, but arrogant. Anyway, so here's another guy. Another, here's a guy I like a lot, Mike Huckabee. Mike Huckabee, just my, I don't know. I like Mike Huckabee a lot. He's on the list of potential uh, Republican candidates. And uh-huh. if, you, if you think I'm not going to do Democrats, I will. I have them as well. I probably do them after the bottom of the hour. Oh, okay. Uh, Mike Huckabee is 59 years old, used to have a talk show. We had him on these airwaves. If you remember, he backed out and decided not to do radio anymore, and that was that story. Right. Uh, He was the governor of Arkansas. We were able to meet him, was it twice or just once? Uh, once We had him as a guest on the phone. that's right. More than once. And we met him in person at Uh, Books Books a Million. Million. The book signing. The book signing of Books a Million. Yep, and we've got photos. Which that Books a Million is now gone, right? Right, right. That's not anymore. Uh, Michael's is in its place. There. So where did they go? They just went out of business? The, yeah, they went out of business. So he was there signing his book. Mm-hmm. Was it the Christmas book he wrote? Yes. He was a really nice guy. But but anyway, um, he's an ordained Baptist minister, for those who didn't know that about Mike Huckabee. He's got three children. He's married. Just a likable guy, I think. Yeah. He gets very. picked on a lot by people who don't like him, but... Because he has a radio show, or at a radio show. No, no, no. They don't like him because he's very conservative, in my opinion. Uh, Anyway, um, let's see. What what are the cons against Mike Huckabee? He has threatened to leave the Republican Party and run as an independent over gay marriage. Uh, Why is that a con? He's alienating some moderate conservatives. Uh, The Club for Growth opposes him for... for, uh, What do you call it? For... Fiscal pro- policies while governor. Oh. Uh, he has distanced some women because of uh, Uncle Sugar comments. I'm not sure, sure what that is. I, I don't know. By the, by the way, if the, if the state of Florida uh, legalizes gay marriage. Yes. How are these people going to con- con- consummate? They, the sodomy is still illegal. <laughs> oh, that's right. So we're going to have it will be legal to be married, but illegal to do anything about it. Yeah, because right. sodomy is still on the books. <laughs> just, so it's illegal. <laughs> don't get mad at me for saying that. I'm just basically trying to make a joke. Good morning. You're on the air. Thank you for Hi, calling. This is Kathy. Hi. Hi, Robin. Hi, Larry. Happy New Year. Thank you. You too. Um, Mike, Mike Huckabee was was in the area three different times. I won a VIP position. Oh, yeah, you did. The first time when I, he was at the village. Yeah. And then he was at, at the First Baptist Church, and then he came to this Books a Million in Ocala. That's right. He Wait, sure did. We have a so picture of you with him. I him all three times. It was really, really neat. <laughs> did you get to spend any time with him and actually chat with him? Yes, I did. What uh-huh. was your, what was your I got, thought? I got to take pictures of him. I got some really good, well, if I do say so myself, so good pictures of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you did. I remember them. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. I remember mean, when you all were at the Ocala one. Yeah, both of you, you interviewed him. We only met right. him in person at the Books a Million. But yeah, you. some of our listeners, including you, Kathy, met him in all three places. Yeah. Right, exactly. And thanks well, to you, that one in the villages. And well, I got there so early, I ended up being first at Lockheed. 
Oh, oh really? Wonderful. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so I got my book signed first. It was really neat. Well, and if it's so. if it says anything at all, if it says anything yeah. at all, my impression of and Jeb- I won the book from you all too. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. 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 All right, Kathy. Well, so thank you. <laughs> thank, oh, thank you, and and happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, happy New Year to you. Okay, bye-bye. And, right. and, and we do have those pictures in a photo <clears throat> album on the WOCA Facebook page in case anybody missed it. But but if it, for what it's worth, for what it means, if anything at all, I will tell you this. We've spoken to Marco Rubio, and I'm not saying I don't like the guy's politics. I do. A lot of his stuff is really outstanding. But he was rude to me. Yeah, he was. So he kind of left me with a weird feeling, you know? Yeah. Because here I am supporting him, and he was kind of rude to me. Yeah. Same thing with Jeb Bush. Right. We were supporting him. We were bringing him a gift. Mm -hmm. He was a little bit rude to me. Yeah. So it left me with a weird feeling. Mike Huckabee, on the other hand, um, was, was as nice as could be. Oh, he was. Was he, just as nice. Am I being honest? Yes, you are. Very honest. Uh, am, am I, I'm, I'm dismissing two guys because they were rude to me, and who knows what was going on. Well, in Bush's case, it was the day after September 11th, so. Yeah, but but still. But still, I wasn't, I mean, you No, know, there was nothing. There was no reason to be rude, is what no. I think, you know? Exactly. Huckabee could have been rude. I mean, he was on a bus touring the country. He could have been, I mean, you, when you're on a bus you know traveling all like that it's e- it's easy to be grumpy but he yeah. wasn't he was not no so i'm you know what if he runs i'm gonna support him i have no reason to not support him yeah uh other other names on the list of, of people who are in the republican jo- john bolton do you know john bolton i haven't heard of him i'm sorry to say john bolton is uh say. u.s ambassador to the u.n under George W. Bush. Mm -hmm. He's 66 years old. He's got some strong foreign policy credentials. He's considered honest, straightforward, and direct. I've never met him or spoken to him. Mm -hmm. Uh, But he is seen as lacking in charisma. Is this uh, that should be the worst reason to not vote for somebody, because they lack charisma. Well, that's how it was between Kennedy and Nixon. I mean, everybody embraced the charisma, and Nixon was not as charismatic. Good morning. You're on the air. Uh, good morning, Larry. Hey, Robin. Sonny. Uh, I'll tell you, I think uh, John Bolton would be, I think, one of the most honest candidates going for presidency. Everybody uh, missed that little article about where Jeb Bush resigned from Barclays Bank. Well, number one, Barclays is basically a European bank. Number two, it's... Uh, been associated with the so-called Bilderbergers group or mm. people that came from the Bilderbergers group and uh, I didn't think he do he did such a great job as governor of this state to be honest with you okay so anyway out of everybody I I would uh, put Bolton as number one Bolton your guy has consistently yeah. been pro-american anti-un and uh you know, his for his goal is the American people and and the country first, not everybody else. And then if there's anything left over for the country, uh, uh, you know they'll throw they'll throw us a bone. Yeah. Okay. We well, have to bring back our jobs. We have to start uh, limiting this so-called free trade because it's free trade for everybody in the world except the United States i.e. so-called allies South Korea, uh, they'd like beef over there, but why is it they consistently uh, keep our beef in, in uh, warehouses for extended periods of time rather than uh, putting it out to the markets so that it can be sold in a fresher state? I mean, that's just one example. Uh, but yet, uh, you know, they have... Uh, immediate access to all our markets with whatever they export here. So, you know, uh, that's just another example. There. All right. Well, I have to keep, the, have to keep our is, eye on that guy. We have a perfectly good immigration bill that's starting to grow whiskers now. It was signed in 1986. And if you ever read that bill, you would really, uh, it's an eye-opener. Uh, this is what should have been done in 86, and if we had uh, initiated or uh, followed through with the rest of that bill, I firmly believe the Twin Towers would be standing today. Mm. 
right. Wow. Other than that, That's I, strong. I, I, I have no. I, I've never been so let down uh, after an election as this election when we see uh, what the Republicans now gaining majority in both houses, et cetera, et cetera. They go along by re-electing this uh, Speaker of the House and and uh, one of the weakest people in the Senate, uh, this Mitch McConnell, as the right. leader of the Senate. Sonny, I thank you for the call. We're up against the uh, clock, but you're, you. you're, you're welcome okay, to call back. Thank you. Happy New Year to you, too. Uh, yeah, Sonny, you're welcome to call back. Everybody's welcome to call in as we do. We'll continue this discussion about the potential candidates. We've only touched on the Republicans so far. We'll, we'll be right back. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. Strong winds and heavy rain hampering recovery efforts in the Java Sea for that Air Asia jet. Indonesian officials say sonar images they viewed could show the upside down fuselage of the plane at the bottom of the sea. It's still unclear if the plane is broken up or in one piece. The waters in the Java Sea are relatively shallow. Once the weather clears, divers are likely to be able to search the ocean floor. Fox News David Piper, seven bodies recovered so far, 162 were on board. In Canada, Edmonton, Alberta police call it the city's worst ever mass murder. They say a man with a long criminal record killed eight people, including two children at two sites, then killed himself. There will be lots of rosy cheeks to match the flowers in tomorrow's Tournament of Roses parade with record-breaking cold forecasts for Pasadena, California. They're all bundled up and just running on adrenaline, so I think they're just excited to be here. A record low of 32 was set in 1952. Fox News, we report, you decide. How would you like to have customized professional business cards that give you the confidence you need for every new business opportunity without needing any design experience? With Vistaprint, you can. Because Vistaprint makes it so simple for business owners and business dreamers to get the customized tools they need to help their business thrive. And right now, you can get 500 high-quality professional business cards for just $9.99. But hurry, this offer won't last long. Go to Vistaprint.com today and enter promo code 3366 at checkout. That's Vistaprint.com, promo code 3366. If you own a smartphone, you're at risk of losing important data if your phone is lost or damaged. With iDrive, just 99 cents per year gets you 100 gigabytes of protection. That's over 50,000 photos or more than 10 hours of HD video. No matter what happens to your phone, your data is safe with iDrive. Don't wait until it's too late. Protect your data with iDrive. Get iDrive today for 99 cents a year on the Apple App Store or in Google Play. What are the most common questions those nearing retirement are asking? Will I outlive my money? Retirement questions like these and many more will be answered every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on planning for a better and safer retirement with hosts Francois and Julian Cozanet. Francois and Julian will help you put your retirement puzzle together. Catch planning for a better and safer retirement Saturdays at 9 a.m. on Ocala's News Talk, the source 96.3 FM and 1370 a.m. A garden and we've got a show for you called you've got a garden with your host master gardener carol ann baldwin carol ann answers your questions about your flowers your veggies your grass your trees even questions about your bugs and she's only on woca so don't miss carol ann baldwin and you've got a garden each tuesday from 9 a.m to 10 a.m right here on woca the source Legally Yours, brought to you by Fuller & Fuller Attorneys at Law. On the air every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. with John Fuller, a board-certified civil trial lawyer for over 25 years. John welcomes your questions from business to complex family matters to legal disputes. So tune in every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. for Legally Yours with John Fuller, right here on WOCA 1370 a.m. and 96.3 FM, The Source. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing. Our tractor services include bush hog, disking, front end loader, box blade, and stump grinding. We also have zero turn mowers for the smaller paddocks, aisleways, fence rows, and lawn care. Fence row spraying is also available for weed control. We are licensed and insured. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440 or online at powellgene, G-E-N-E, at yahoo.com. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Do you need a quick energy boost? Massage your ears. It can reduce fatigue for 81% of women. Just because you're out of work doesn't mean you shouldn't have business cards. Don't make that mistake. What should you put on it if you're unemployed? 
Use your last job title. As smart as they are, lefties are more likely to have minor accidents since things like knives, tools, and machines are typically designed for righties. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Hey, I'm Gary. And I'm Eric. Did you know that Red Eye Radio is on WOCA The Source every night from 2 to 6 a.m. and it's live. That's right. No tape shows here. We know that the news doesn't sleep and neither do we. So we're here with you live from 2 till 6 a.m. every weekday. Call us 866-90-RED-EYE. So join me, Gary McNamara, and me, Eric Harley, every weeknight to discuss the latest in news and entertainment right here on WOCA The Source. 1370 WOCA. All right, 25 minutes before 10 o'clock. If you were waiting for the psychic lady to come on, we don't have her today. No, no. She got sick or something. She didn't see it coming either. No, no, she crazy. didn't. That was, yeah, I thought, oh, she's going to come on. Give us predictions. Going to tell you what your year was going to be like, <laughs> what my year was going to be like. Patsy said, whatever we do tomorrow is what we're going to do all year long. Yeah. So I got to think of something to do. Me too. I'll this probably be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I probably will be doing this all year long. <laughs> all right, so we'll, let's continue what we were doing. It's, it was kind of fun, uh, and I, you know, it's it's funny because when when you talk about the presidential candidates and you talk about your feelings about those people, mm-hmm. um, it is interesting that you might like their politics, but not necessarily have really good feelings about them. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so. And I don't know how many of you... And, and how do you have a feeling about somebody who's usually un- inaccessible? Although in in the case of a handful of them, and I, I suppose it's because of what we do for a living, mm-hmm. we have either spoken to them on the phone or met them in person. There's been a few like that. Yeah, um, yeah. Very but, I, but I'll be honest with you. I really don't let that affect my vote. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, Marco Rubio could easily get my vote even though I thought he was a little bit rude to me yeah so I, but I really don't let it affect it I, try, I really try to look at everybody and, and that and gosh right now we're talking about the, the, the heavy hitters but I mean the local people as well I've had the same exact experience with a lot of local candidates uh, good morning you're on the air good morning Larry and Robin happy new year hey happy Lauren healthy new year. thank you you too you're welcome um, you know uh, I was thinking if we wanted a surgeon as much as we'd want that surgeon to have uh, a fabulous, well-rounded personality and very social and communicative, would we want the surgeon who was top-notch in his field and on top of um, all the correct procedures and protocols and followed through on, on everything top-notch surgical, or would we take the person who was more social and so, you know, I think it applies to anything in life. Um, you know, not everyone can be 100% fabulous in all aspects of personality and, and profession and knowledge and ability. So I would, I would try to focus on, well, who's, who's the person who's best for the, the 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 job the position uh, what has to be done and accomplished you know do you want someone uh, who's going to do that or just you know be a, a nice person I think you're absolutely right I, I do think though if I and, and this isn't to argue with you but this is just I I think you'll actually agree with this. But I think what you say is exactly how most listeners to talk radio feel. But I do think there's a certain element of the population that they don't even think that far <laughs> if, if you talk to them about it they would hear oh yeah i agree with that but most of them don't even think that they say oh i like that guy i'm gonna vote for him or i like mm-hmm. that lady or she's pretty or whatever mm-hmm. right oh yes absolutely because that aspect of communication and interaction is so um, important and forefront. And I mean, you know, it, it's even in the dating world where when you meet someone, I mean, what's your first impression? Well, your first impression is visual. And, you know, and then they open their mouth 
and then it goes from there. So, <laughs> right, right. You know, you know, we always have to try to get, not always, I mean, it depends, but yeah, I mean, and look at how many times it has happened that, you know, it's just based on appearance and, you know, you, you just, it, it's amazing. Like, it, it gets into human nature, too. You know, like, you can't judge a book by its cover. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, someone I know wrote, wrote, a, wrote a, a song, Nice House, Nobody Home, um, about his <laughs> dating life. You know, oh, uh -huh. you know, nice house, but nobody home. Yeah. So, well, I, I met um, her, too, yeah. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> yeah, don't you like that, Robin? I know, nice yeah. house, nobody home. So, um, but just to, put my, just to put my two cents in for... Um, people running, um, Colonel Alan West and Dr. Ben Carson would love them to be um, president and vice president. So um, thank you. And your programming is so wonderful. And my prediction is that we can look forward to another year of fabulous programming and topics and presentations by Larry and Robin and WOCA. Thank oh, you. That was sweet. Thank you so much, Lauren. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I, I think I, well, I absolutely agree with what she's saying. I, I think the, um, the, the, the vast majority of talk radio listeners mm -hmm. agrees with her, thinks the way she thinks, and votes the way she probably votes. I do think there's a there's something to be said, though, for somebody who has, um, I guess, low grade, I don't know how to even say this, uh, personality wise, mm -hmm. um, who uh, won't get, won't capture the fascination of a large portion of the public. Yeah. Which is wrong, which is crazy, but it's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. and, and I think when you're looking for a candidate, I think you look for somebody who can do the job but who is also likable because you know that the unlikable guy who can do the job, the surgeon who has no bedside manner, to use her analogy, yeah, the surgeon with no bedside manner, but who's a very, very good surgeon, is the guy you want. Yes. The guy with good bedside manner that has no surgical skills at all is mm -hmm. the guy you don't want. Mm -hmm. But ultimately in politics, you want the surgeon, sticking with the metaphor, mm -hmm. Who not only can do the job, but has the good personality. That's what you look for. Yeah. Because you know that person will appeal to the people who are not talk listener, talk radio listeners. Mm -hmm. That's, That's right. my thought on that. Good morning. You're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Larry? Good. Hey, I know you're in, uh, uh, I forgot her name. Robin. Robin. Y'all Republicans, right? Robin. Hey, how you doing, Mr. Hey. Robin? <laughs> I, am, I am registered as a Republican. I have voted for Democrats. Yep. I, I vote person, not party. Yeah. Always. Right, right. I'm the same way because, you know, I've been voting Democrat all my life, but I respect, you know, whoever is going to run, you know, to get the country back on track. And I think um, being nominee for presidency, you know, because I remember when I was, you know, growing up in one thing is missing that, you know, they say we, we don't lost respect for the presidency. Um, my mom always taught me, you know, the first thing in the morning, pray for your country, pray for your president, pray for your family. And I, and I think that's missing today because we don't lost so much respect for one another as a people, as a culture, that we can't see, you know, the water is so muddy that, you know, we just, like, it's like a football team. I hate you because you're on that team, and if you're not rooting for us, you're against us. So I think we need to come back together as a country, as a people, regardless race, color, you know, religion, and let's try to get it back right because a nation divided against itself should not stand. Well spoken. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's nothing I disagree with in what you've said. So, uh, and that's the whole thing about the labels, the Republican Democrat labels. It doesn't define me. It doesn't define you. Right. It might define right. some people, but it doesn't define most people I know. Mm -hmm. so. Right. Right. Because I respect. You know, I like I say, I respect you because of what you do, not what you say. Because you know, hey, you know, I'm running for the presidency mm -hmm. now. Like. I got it, you know. I was telling you this on the campaign, but now y'all going to see the real me. <laughs> yeah, you know? right, right. So right. I, I haven't been down that road before, but like I say, just let us, you know, start respecting us. I mean, people 
as Americans and as people individually. And I think, you know, we'll get along better in this country, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said. Thank you for the call. Appreciate you calling in. All right. Thank you. Have a happy New Year. Th- thank you. You too. Happy New Year. All right. So uh, we're talking about the, the candidates, and I promised we would do the Democrats. But let me uh, let me get another couple of phone calls in here. If I, if I, by the way, we're having kind of an enjoyable, just kind of a more, almost a relaxed kind of a day yeah. because uh, our psychic guest couldn't call in. So it's kind of <laughs> in a good way. It's a good thing. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah. Good morning, guys. Hey, Hugh. You're right. This is a very fun program. I'm really enjoying it. Say, going back to 48 when Truman ran against Dewey, which was a very, very close election, the Chicago Tribune had that famous headline saying Dewey won, and, and actually Truman had won the, the what you call it. But they did a big survey after that uh, uh, after that election, and, and they found out, and this is according to, uh, I read it several times, but my, my history teacher in high school brought this up several times, they took a survey and they found out that a lot of people didn't vote for Dewey because they had a mustache and it reminded them, them of, of Hitler. Oh, really? See? Yeah. That just shows Pardon. our point. That's, that's a, that's a, isn't that strange and crazy? Yeah. Wow, did he, yeah. Have, did he have a Hitler type of mustache? Pardon? Did he have a Hitler looking mustache? Yeah, just oh, very close to it, yes. Oh, uh-huh. no. Wow, I didn't realize. Well, that was also a style back in those days. Didn't uh, St- uh, Oliver Hardy have a mustache like that? Yeah. And, and Charlie well, Chaplin? You go, you yes. Go, Oliver Hardy, well, one of my favorites, Laurel Hardy. That, that, that you're going way back now into the late 30s, uh, yeah, but, early, early 40s. But that's, 40s that, but that's where the styles... Right? Yeah, yeah, that yeah, Oliver Hardy had a Hitler mustache. <laughs> yeah, and Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, uh, okay, guys, have a good New Year. Thank you, thank you, you too. All right, let me squeeze in one more before we take our break. Good morning, you're on the air. Uh, good morning, Larry. Yeah. Uh, I would honestly say uh, that, uh, to me, if it was a Democrat running or whatever, I, I and I thought they were good, and they came out with a... Uh, you know, a, a good platform and some honest uh, positions, I would definitely vote for a Democrat over a Republican because, look, we had an 86 uh, amnesty bill signed. Both parties ignored that bill. It's actually a law. Right. And uh, so to me, there's no difference. Uh, the only thing is the Democrat Party, I think, has been totally hijacked by some uh, foreign entities or the bureaucrats in, in Washington. And uh, that's their problem, my, my belief anyway. Because when you have uh, people like Pelosi, Reid, uh, Boxer, and, and, and these people who, who are at the trough openly stuffing their pockets and whatever... Uh, and getting away with it is absolutely mind-boggling to me. Now, that's not to say we don't have uh, McCain's and and uh, uh, several other you know high-ranking Republicans that are would they're all in the same boat. And this is why this country needs a third party. Ten years ago, we uh, I, 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 I agree. That's the only thing I could tell you: <clears throat> somebody comes up with a. Uh, a different platform or whatever, and they got my vote. I, I uh, as far as I'm concerned, both parties have thrown the American people and this country to the wind, and uh, we will be paying for it. Taxes have gone up already this year, uh, this year, and they will go up again next year, starting January. So, uh, you know, who do you blame? Yeah. All right. Thank both you, Sonny. Party. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, let's take our let's take our break. When we come back, I promised I would touch on some of the Democratic candidates, and uh, and we'll do that when we come back. Okay. This is WOCA Ocala. The weather is brought to you by myfwc.com. Safe boating is no accident. It'll be mostly cloudy today with a passing shower. Highs anywhere from the mid-60s to the mid-70s. It'll be mostly cloudy tonight with a passing shower. But overnight, though, anywhere from the low 50s inland to the mid-60s to beaches. New Year's Day will be pleasant with clouds and sun and highs in the 70s. Friday, warm with clouds and sun highs in the upper 70s to lower 80s. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. 
The Ocala Civic Theater presents Sleuth, the mysteries and the wits of the two young rivals that battle each other to commit the perfect crime. Predator becomes prey, and this diabolical thriller blends danger and dark humor. The tension builds with every riveting plot twist and illusion. Sleuth at the Ocala Civic Theater on stage January 8th to January 18th. Call the box office at 352-236-2274. Thank you, Joe. Tw- uh, 10 minutes before 10 o'clock. Um, a- after t- the top of the hour, I'm going to switch from the political conversation we're having to some stories of people who um, changed their lives for the better and, and very insp- inspiring stories. So I wanted to make sure I didn't not do that. All right, so I promised we would talk about... S- now, none of these people are actually candidates yeah, just to correct the way I said it before the break, they're all being looked at as potentials, and I'm guessing these individuals are considering whether they'll run. Hillary Clinton is usually first on the list when it comes to uh, a contender in the, on the Democratic Party for the 2016 ticket, the Democratic ticket for the presidential mm-hmm. campaign. Uh, there's no really need, because we all know her so well, there's no real need to talk about her. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the one thing that shoots her as a p- possibility for me to even consider were um, the the Benghazi th- issue. That, oh, yes. Th- that to me was the biggest. I mean, not that I w- was a big supporter of her before, but his, I might have listened a little bit, but when she kind of just threw that whole thing, Sonny says to the wind, I like that expression, or under the bus, I like that yes. expression too. Um, but just that was what any 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 hope for me to be supporting her not that there was much but that was it joe biden is also on the list of people uh, our current vice president um to those who like him um mm-hmm. they like him a lot to those who don't like him he's a he's a he's a problem <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of the way they say it uh um the problem is the thing about being known as either a gaff machine or a fun uncle <laughs> is that the consistent idea that underlies both of those is a struggle to be taken seriously. So mm-hmm. I remember Joe Biden when he was accused of uh, plagiarizing. Isn't plagiarizing the yes. word when you when you steal somebody else's words? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was accused of that and it was proven. Not all, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, it wasn't it was just proven. accused, it was proven. Yeah. And I've always had yeah. very little respect for somebody who doesn't give credit when they're reading somebody else's words exactly. which is why we always tell you who wrote anything we're reading always or took photographs on facebook anything yeah. that we post publicly it's there andrew cuomo is also on the list of potential democratic candidates the uh, uh governor of new york um why do people think he is going to run for the president he is basically number three on everyone's who will run against hillary's list oh okay uh, he's actually not a great fit for the Democratic base, according to many Democrats. Oh. He's gone out of his way to uh, scuttle the ambitions of other New York Democrats. Mm-hmm. The National Review is um, is supporting him, of, of course. On the issue of the public sector unions, he's kind of a Scott walker it says here. And if he ever goes to oh. Iowa, okay. Okay. The anti-fracking forces will greet him with jeers. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, when asked in a recent interview with CBS News if he was thinking about a 2016 bid, Cuomo said not at all. So, assuming oh, okay. assuming he's telling you the truth, it's it's kind mm-hmm. of a moot point to talk about him if he's already made up his mind that he's not going to run at all. Right, but it is potential. You said in the very beginning. Well, he's being talked about by those who talk about these things Mm -hmm. by Democrats mostly. Martin O'Malley is also uh, on the list. Former mayor of Baltimore, current governor of Maryland. Uh, Let's see. Martin O'Malley keeps telling people that he's going to run for office, so that's one of the reasons he's on the list. In Mm -hmm. early August, uh, he told a group of supporters that he was laying the framework for his 2016 presidential bid. Oh, okay. Uh, I've not heard of him. Some people say he has a total lack of charisma. So another another case where, well, what's the guy about rather than how how likable is he? Exactly. Um, some people call his message timid. Um, the ironic thing is that political reporters find his message to be boldly liberal, mm-hmm. which is kind of weird. Uh, Ultimately, there's no reason for O'Malley to sit this one out. He should run. That's uh, according to columnist Jamal Simmons. 
Uh, Bernie Sanders is also on the list of potential uh, Democratic candidates in 2016 who might rise to the occasion in 2015. He is an independent U.S. senator from Vermont. Mm -hmm. Uh, So even though he's an independent, he could run as a Democrat. Uh, He's described as a socialist, Bernie Sanders is. Oh. So with that in mind, you know how I feel. Yes, do I, have, sure. do I have somebody on the phone? I don't know. Good morning. You're on the air. Are you there? Going once, going twice. Good morning. You're on the air. Morning. This is Pete again. Hey, Pete. I wanted to uh, kind of commiserate with you about predictions. Go ahead. Just, you know, I'm not very good at predictions either. And I follow politics, but I just wanted to say that back in 2008, I predicted that Barack Obama wouldn't make it past the Iowa primary, so I'm not going to make any predictions this year, but it certainly is going to be an interesting election. Do you know, that's a good point. How many of us didn't even hear the name Obama? How many of us thought that Rush Limbaugh was making f- something up Yeah. when he was talking about exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Never heard of him. I think, it, I think it's funny about Hillary because everybody in, in 2008, everybody was, they already had her name printed on the ballot practically, and look what happened to her, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you, Pete. Appreciate that. Um, good morning. You're on the air. Anybody there? No, we can see it on the screen, but nobody's chatting. Nobody's there. No. I don't know if it's a bad phone line or what. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Hey, you, Lenny. How's Robin and how's Larry? Pretty good. Well, a happy new year to you. Thank you. I think probably the bottom line, it'll end up being Hillary and Jeb Bush. Okay. And I just think mainly because of the money aspect of it. I think they're the ones that can really get into the deep pockets. And I think that's going to make the difference as opposed to philosophical uh, approaches that each one of them take. You're, as a Democrat, do you, do you favor uh, Hillary? I, 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 I really think that that's probably who it's going to end up being. But of all these other candidates, do you put her as your best, your favorite choice? She, you know, at this moment, the person that I would like to see, she is not going to run. It's going to be, I would like to see Elizabeth Warren, uh, but she's not going to run. But she would fight it out with the bankers and all these different people and the big boys on Wall Street. She she would uh, definitely, I think, be the the one that I would I would lean towards. She's more for the little guy, so I kind of wonder about the money aspect. But well, she's she's one of the most genuine uh, when it comes to politics. As close to being honest as I've seen in quite a while. Uh, and she doesn't back down. She doesn't back down. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what. Hmm. All right. Thank you, Lenny. Appreciate okay, that. Okay. Have a good one. Yeah, Elizabeth Warren. This list of here is a potential, but she's book. She's grouped kind of with Cory Booker, oh. Julian Castro, and Deval Patrick. These people have publicly professed that they are not running for president, uh, but they will continue to be asked whether they are by reporters. Well, it would be interesting if you had a lady. Well, we've had have we had a lady running for president before? I can't. I mean, it's actually got to the past the primaries. No, 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 not past the primary. Um, who was it? Was it Dole's wife that was? No, she was in a different office too. So, I don't think. But she I, re- was. I remember. I think I was supporting her back. Yeah, back yeah, in she those was. Days. She was running. That's right. That's right. Elizabeth Dole. She was running. Uh, so elsewhere on the Democrat list, let's see who did I touch on already? I touched on uh, Hillary, Joe Biden, uh, Andrew Cuomo, Martin O'Malley. Um, is John Kerry on your list? No, he's not. Yeah, I'm surprised. Because I don't see I Howard Dean would... is on the list. Uh, Mark Warner is on the list, former governor of Virginia. Um, I guess some people want to see him on there. Uh, Jim Webb is on the list. Uh, let's take a phone call. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Larry. This is June. Hey, June. I just want to wish you and Robin a happy and blessed new year. Thank you, June. I really June. mean that. From the bottom of my heart, you guys do so much good for this uh, Marion County and everything. It's just unbelievable. And as far as politics goes, I used to be so enthralled and wrapped up in it. Right now, I'm so totally confused. I have no idea what I'm going to do. So I just thought I'd put that forward. And thank you again, guys, for all the wonderful things you do. And have another have a, have a wonderful new year. Thank Bye-bye. you. Appreciate that, 
Uh, all right. Uh, so, so anyway, as, as we wrap up this hour, uh, let me squeeze in one last phone call. We've got less than a minute. Good morning. You're on the air. Uh, good morning, Larry Robinson again. You know, you, you talk about the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. Uh, it used to be the Republicans are for big money and the Democrats for the middle class. Well, uh, who uh, helped out Wall Street the most ever? It was the administration and the Democrats, especially Christopher Dodd and Barney Frank with what they were able to do with so-called regulations that did nothing more than enhance all the big banks in Wall Street and uh, also pumped up the uh, stock market. Mm. So, you know, it's it's anybody's guess, and I, I just... I'm totally bewildered one way or the other. Yeah, I think we all are. Th- thank you, Sonny. Uh, I don't mean to be rude. We have to take a break. This is WOCA Ocala. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. Nightfall in the Java Sea has brought recovery efforts to a halt for another day in the Air Asia disaster. Seven bodies found so far. Prayers today in a waiting room at the airport the plane set off from. About 40 of the people aboard were from the same church. Meanwhile, the U.S. 7th Fleet says a warship helping to track the debris will remain in the area as long as needed. Fox Radio's Alistair Wanklin. 162 people were on board that flight. More Americans signed up for unemployment benefits last week with a rise of 17,000 in first-time claims, but experts say low overall numbers suggest solid economic growth will continue. In Sydney, Australia... A huge fireworks display bringing in the new year with one and a half million people at Sydney Harbor, up to a million expected tonight in New York for the New Year's celebration in Times Square. Fox News, we report, you decide. How would you like to have customized professional business cards that give you the confidence you need for every new business opportunity without needing any design experience? With Vistaprint, you can. Because Vistaprint makes it so simple for business owners and business dreamers to get the customized tools they need to help their business thrive. And right now, you can get 500 high-quality professional business cards for just $9.99. But hurry, this offer won't last long. Go to Vistaprint.com today and enter promo code 3366 at checkout. That's Vistaprint.com, promo code 3366. If you own a smartphone, you're at risk of losing important data if your phone is lost or damaged. With iDrive, just 99 cents per year gets you 100 gigabytes of protection. That's over 50,000 photos or more than 10 hours of HD video. No matter what happens to your phone, your data is safe with iDrive. Don't wait until it's too late. Protect your data with iDrive. Get iDrive today for 99 cents a year on the Apple App Store or in Google Play. Today in Florida Ag News, from a Southeast AgNet, well, the tax break extensions for farm equipment, which Congress passed before their holiday break, were retroactive for 2014, and thus will end at midnight tonight. Those incentives are worth a half a million dollars in single-year tax expensing instead of the $25,000 rate that will go back into effect on January 1st. Congress tried without success to reach a more permanent tax deal, failing to stop the year-to-year uncertainty over tax breaks. So when lawmakers get back to work in 2015, it will be up to the incoming tax committee chairs, Utah Senator Orrin Hatch and Wisconsin Congressman Paul Ryan, to move ahead with a new tax reform plan. Both have said they are committed to moving in a new direction, adding certainty to the tax code. So time will tell to see if a permanent solution can be found, or farmers will end up in this very same situation one year from now. Well, in other news, the American Farm Bureau plans to again tackle immigration, regulatory issues, GMO trade, and other initiatives in 2015. AFBS Dale Moore says the big issues for agriculture have not gone away. Immigration reform is one of them. The importance of of having a a stable, uh, accessible uh, workforce that our farmers and ranchers need in different parts of the country. We're going to be obviously continuing the push to get uh, EPA to withdraw their Waters of the U.S. rule and and keep our Ditch the Rule campaign moving forward. And Moore says a handful of other issues are also likely to come up. Tax reform, uh, that's an ongoing battle, whether we're looking at individual tax issues or business tax issues. And then we know that there's some things that, uh, you know, 
the agriculture committees, uh, I'm pretty certain, are going to have on their docket at some point uh, during the year, uh, looking at you know the Commodity Exchange Act and uh, the rules and laws that govern the CFTC and how the futures trading works. And of course, Trade Promotion Authority, the Trans-Pacific Partnership talks, and a fuller reopening of the Cuba market will all be active issues in 2015. Randall Wiseman, Southeast Agnet. Legally Yours, brought to you by Fuller & Fuller Attorneys at Law. On the air every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. with John Fuller, a board-certified civil trial lawyer for over 25 years. John welcomes your questions from business to complex family matters to legal disputes. So tune in every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. for Legal